For the Natural Trek Losers season kickoff, we traveled to Kutai, Austria, met the stars and the challengers. And also follow the highlights of a thrilling race weekend. Kutai is situated in the Stubai Alps, 2,020 meters above sea level. In former times, it was the hunting grounds for Austrian counts and emperors. The Natural Track Losers held their first World Cup race of the season here. The format was an uncommon parallel race, head-to-head -head on a 200-meter track, two runs per heat up to the finals. It's quite steep and a bit narrower than the tracks we normally run. That's why it's important to ride very precisely. And for sure, it's something special that we have to start on command. That's different than in normal World Cup races. On the first run, both losers start at the same time. The doors open simultaneously. On the second run, the slower loser from the first run has to start with a handicap. The athlete has to cope with that and mentally come to terms with it. He also has to avoid making a false start. A false start is punished with a 1.5 second penalty, so it is all about getting a good start. The Kutai track is technically very demanding. You can still regain some ground after making a mistake at the start, but the start isn't that important here, though everything you lose at the start you have to regain on the track. That's why most athletes tend to risk a lot at the start gate. The upper part of the run was very steep. It had to be prepared by hand and not with machines as usual. Nobody had ridden it so far, so who had the best chances to win on this rough track? For people who are mentally strong and physically in good condition, quickness and agility on these loose tracks are also important. The track is bumpier than usual. It's very, very important to hit the entrances to the banks perfectly, to calculate the speed and to brake at exactly the right point. Getting from the quarterfinals to the finals is extremely demanding and you also need to have luck on your side in the pairings. You need to have some luck on your side during your preparations for this wild ride. You have to risk a lot if you want to get on the podium. A few seconds or meters can decide. A lot of things can happen here. In the previous season, Italians Patrick Pignetter and Florian Clara won the overall World Cup in the men's double category ahead of Ergorov Popov from Russia and Regensburger Holzknecht from Austria. But will the Italians be the men to beat again this season? We met Patrick Pignetter and Florian Clara at Kutai Hunting Lodge for a cup of tea. The lodge was built in the 13th century and still reminds visitors of Kutai's past as an imperial hunting ground. Hi, I'm Florian Clara, and I'm 27 years old. I'm Patrick Pignetter. I'm 28, and I ride the double luge together with Florian. We've been riding together for eight years. Since our first training runs, it's always worked out quite well. He always did what I told him, and I always did what he told me. We always look forward to the double. We often prefer the double to the single luge. We complement each other very well. Florian likes to tinker around and I'm responsible for everything else. Let's put it this way, there's always something to tinker around with. You have to do it as it's a permanent progression. If you always concentrate on your material, you'll find something new time and time again. Otherwise, it would be boring somehow. We had a low three years ago. Since then, we've put a lot of energy into the double category. We've trained and tinkered a lot. Now we have fantastic material and great technique. It won't be easy to beat us, but we've got to put the pedal to the metal again. We've won everything we can win, but we're still hungry for victory, and that's why we'll keep on keeping on for as long as we can. 
bei mir auch weitermachen, solange es mir können. Traditionally, the Double Loose category kicks off the race weekend. Christoph Regensberger and Dominik Holzknecht, as well as Alexander Ergarov and Peter Popov, were qualified for the quarterfinals. And here's the start list. Pignater Clara's opponents don't seem to be too strong, but first, there's an Austrian duel. Regensberger Holzknecht were third in the overall ranking in the previous year. They met their compatriots Schopf and Schopf, who were 100th back after the first run. Brothers Christian and Andreas Schopf had come back after a one-year hiatus. They were in good form and harmonized well on the bumpy ground. The brothers even took the lead for a short time, but Regensberger Holzknecht struck back. They took the last bank perfectly and were faster by just the blink of an eye, three hundredths of a second in the lead, and that was enough to qualify for the semis. Schopf, Schopf took fifth place in the end. At the second quarter final, pro losers Alexander Ergorov and Peter Popov met young Italians Folia and Gruber. In the first run, the Russians had been six-tenths of a second faster than Armin Folia and Elias Gruber. Though delivering a great performance, the youngsters didn't stand a chance in the second run as well. Egorov Popov reached the next round without batting an eye. Siblings Tadej and Petr Dragicevic from Slovenia are one of only two mixed doubles in the field. They were 44 hundredths of a second back after the first run. Their Russian opponents Stanislav Kovšik and Ilya Tarasov were stepping it up in the second run too. Though not remaining error-free, they were able to extend their lead despite riding in the slower blue track. Dragicevic Dragicevic ended the race in seventh place, while Kovšik Tarasov were looking forward to the semis. The last quarterfinal saw an uneven duel. Isa Guzelogu and Mohamed Said Oskan from Turkey versus Italian dominators Pignater Clara. The Turks gate opened 1.5 seconds later, bringing the maximum deficit into the second run. Focusing on their line, Patrick Pignater and Florian Clara outpaced the Turkish double and advanced to the semi-finals. Guzelogu Oskan took eighth place in the end. The third and the second of the previous year's World Cup ranking clashed at the first semi-final. Regensberger Holzknecht and Egorov Popov. After the first run, the Russians were 43 hundredths back. In the second run, they were again less lively than the highly motivated duo of Regensberger and Holzknecht, who didn't allow themselves to make a mistake on this bumpy track. The Austrians would fight for victory in the final, while Egorov Popov made a bid for third place in the petite final. And in the other semi-final, the second Russian team of Kovshik Tarasov met favorites Pignater Clara. The Russians were 55 hundredths of a second back after the first run, and the Italians had gotten better with every round. In the second run, they were again riding very confidently and fast. Kovshik Tarasov's ride wasn't that perfect. As the logical consequence, Pignater Clara reached the final, while Kovshik Tarasov had to fight for third place. After a short break, they met their Russian team colleagues Egorov Popov in the petite final. In the first run, Kovshik Tarasov showed a wild ride and took a lead of 12 hundredths of a second. But this time, they left the start gate too early. A false start and a 1.5 second penalty. Bad luck for the young Russians. Egorov and Popov didn't make any major mistakes and took third place, while Stanislav Kovshik and Ilya Tarasov had to be content with fourth. Final in the double category, Pignetter Clara on the red track, Regensburger Holznecht on the blue one. A bit of a disadvantage for the young Austrians. They were ten hundredths back after the first run, but they showed a daredevil ride in the upper part, even taking the lead. Would they be able to win over the favorites for the first time? Pignetter Clara struck back. In the middle section, they took the lead again and then up the ante with an unbelievable performance at the final bank, 49 hundredths of a second ahead at the finish line. 
Despite the defeat, the race was a big success for Regensburger Holzknecht. It's only the second time in their career that they've reached second place. For Bignett or Clara, it's their 35th victory at a World Cup race. Yes, for sure. It's great to start the season with a win. This was our dream. We hadn't felt too well with the training for the parallel race. But we've improved run by run and then had the perfect runs in the finals. With their third place, Alexander Elgroff and Peter Popov took to the podium for the 20th time. Now, it was the single loser's turn to inspect the track. As the double losers had broken in the track already, it was now easier to ride. Multiple time winner Ekaterina Lavrenteva dominated the Women's World Cup in the previous year, but Evelyn Lantaler, who took second place, and Greta Pinguera in third had become dangerous for her several times. Tina Unterberger, who was fourth in the overall ranking, is the grand dam of the sport. Though she has never won a race, she has been among the leading riders for many, many years. I'm Tina Unterberger. I've been doing natural track luge for 20 years. I think this is one of the coolest sports you can do in winter or, in the meantime, in summer as well. And by the way, I hail from Goisern, Austria. When I was a kid, the world championship was held in Goisern. I watched it together with my family. The riding style, especially in the banks, was spectacular. But when I first tried it, the feeling wasn't as good as I had imagined it would be. It didn't work out like I had expected, but they did a good job at Goisern introducing us to the sport cautiously. Then I finally found the feeling I had imagined. It's a cool feeling now to sit in the luge and race down an ice track. I definitely should improve my performance at the start area. I'm not one of the larger athletes. I have a disadvantage regarding leverage, but you can compensate that with strength. Another important thing to me is the parallel start with this signal counting down from five to zero. I just can't wait for it. I can't wait for the zero. I just want to go out there. And I hope this will work out well this weekend. I'm not very talented concerning the technical aspect, I have to admit. Robert Batkovsky is doing these things for me. He's a former world-class loser. It's really a science to prepare the skates, the grade, the edges. I could talk about this forever, but I just don't know the ropes. That's why I'm really glad that he's doing it all for me. We have waxed the skates once again and checked the safety features, meaning the hand protection and how the rail sits. Now I'm ready to go out there and race. At the women's, the critical phase was about to begin. The crucial second run at the quarterfinals was in store for them. There hadn't been any bigger surprises so far. All favorites were still in the race. At the first quarterfinal, reigning world champion Evelyn Lantauer from Italy met Russia with Mila Astramovic. Lantauer had a comfortable lead of almost a second after the first run. And she was able to improve on that. She even expanded her lead on the more demanding blue track and got the ticket for the semi-final. Astramovich took eighth place overall. The second quarterfinal saw two 20-year-old Italians face off against each other. Bredek Vingera versus Sarah Bachmann. Vingera, who was overall third in the previous year, had a lead of 50 hundredths of a second after the first run. She lost 30 hundredths to Bachmann in the second run. But that was not enough to lose the duo. Vingera, who is one month older, advanced to the semis while Bachmann was happy to end up in fifth place. Young German Teresa Maurer had to cope with Russian superstar Ekaterina Lavrenteva in the third quarterfinal. Lavrenteva had a powerful start. Maurer's gate opening 25 hundredths later. Lavrenteva did well, though not dominating her opponent as she usually does. She saved a 14 hundredths lead to the finish and reached the next round. 17-year-old Teresa Maurer got sixth place. And in the last quarterfinal, it's Austria versus Austria. Tina Unterberger against Michelle Diepold. 
Parallel specialist Unterberger was the favorite, but after the first run, she was 35 hundredths back. Unterberger risked everything, profiting from the advantages of the red track and from a great ride at the final bank. In the end, she was 29 hundredths faster, so while Unterberger advanced to the semis, Diepold ended up in seventh. The strongest woman of the previous season had reached the semis again. The first heat saw Evelyn Lantaler challenging Greta Pinguera. Lantaler had shown a strong first run and went into the second run with a lead of 82 hundredths. A difficult job for Pinguera, even though she rode the faster red track. But Lantaler didn't let down her defenses and took the win. Pinguera had to be happy with the petite final. Tina Unterberger and Ekaterina Lavrentieva battled for the second place in the final. Would Unterberger be able to take one of the rare wins over the Russian? She was 31 hundredths back, but she flew over the track as if there was no tomorrow. Lavrentieva couldn't show her usual ease and finally lost the race. Tina Unterberger celebrated the rare pleasure of winning over the exemplary Lavrentieva. Losers prepared for the showdown, the battle for the medals. First, the petite final. Greta Pingera eagerly wanted to win the bronze medal. Ekaterina Lavrentieva had to catch up half a second, but she rode the faster red track. Pingera had a good start. Lavrentieva was still in the back. Pingera seemed to be absolutely determined to defend her title, no matter whether she rode the blue track or not. Lavrentieva couldn't keep up with that. Greta Pinguera took third place while Ekaterina Lavrentieva had to take a second battering today. She had to be satisfied with an unaccustomed fourth place. And now, the decision in the women's race. Tina Unterberger and Evelyn Lantaler applied for the crown at Kutai. Just as in the semis, Unterberger was back after the first run, though only by tiny ten hundredths. Lantaler only had to defend her lead, which should not be a problem for this brilliant loser. But she also knew that Unterberger rode the faster red track. Lantaler in the lead now, but Unterberger got nearer and nearer. And at the very last bank, Lantaler made a little mistake, and Unterberger took advantage of it in a stone-cold way. With a lead of 32 hundredths, the 29-year-old Tina Unterberger took her first World Cup victory ever. That's how overwhelming joy can look. I still can't believe it. At the previous two parallel races, it had already been possible to win, but today everything went perfectly for the very first time, and that's a fantastic feeling. To challenge the world champion and take a lead over her, that is just great. Evelyn Lantaler in second place, Pinguera in third, and Lavrentieva with a joyless fourth place. In the 2014-15 season, Patrick Pignetter won not only the double, but also the single category. The Italian was followed by his countryman Alex Gruber and Austrian Michael Scheitel. Hi, I'm Alex Gruber from South Tyrol. I'm 23 years old and a passionate natural track loser. I love speed, action, and being close to nature. I just love the outdoors. That is my passion. The last season was a good season. I had 140 points less than Patrick, but this year the gap will be smaller. This year the points will be on my side. We've always had a tough fight. We both had to give everything, and my goal this year is to step it up. I worked really hard in my summer training this year, really hard. My head always said, if it's really tough, then do three more, and then it's all right. I've always been very good in motivating myself. That's just how I am. Mentally, I could be a bit stronger, and maybe my athleticism could also be a bit better. It all has to combine into a package that works very well together. 
I want to be in a position to fight for victory at every World Cup race. You have to have this approach, that you are always able to win and don't want to be second or third because those are the first losers. And now the men were ready for the second run of the quarterfinals. There had been no surprises so far. All top athletes were still in the race. The overall third of the previous year, Michael Schaikel opened the quarterfinals with his heat against Grigory Bukin from Russia. Bukin had six tenths of a second deficit after the first run, but he was on the faster red track now, a psychological advantage for the hunter Bukin, who got a very good start and managed to come closer and closer to Schaikel. In the very last moment, he even overtook him, but then it was announced that he had made a false start. A 1.5 second penalty for Bukin, and Schaikel reached the next round. In the second quarterfinal, Fori and Clara from South Tyrol met local hero Thomas Kamalander. The Austrian from the Ertz Valley went into this second run with a 55 hundredths lead. Florian Clara had been second in the previous year here in Kutai, though. Obviously, he feels at home on this track. Kammerlander went full throttle while Clara gained no momentum. Though riding in the slower blue track, Kammerlander took victory and advanced to the semis, while Florian Clara got fifth. We've seen Alexander Ergorov in the double luge, but he also took part in the single category. The Russian had to compete against Alex Gruber, who was 21 hundredths of a second faster in the first round. On the slower blue track, Gruber risked a lot and found a great line down the hill. Ergorov wasn't able to catch up. Gruber climbed the ladder to the semis, and no Russian was among the final four. Finally, the last quarterfinal, Italian odds-on favorite Patrick Pignetter against young Florian Glatzel from Austria. Sensationally, the 22-year-old Glatzel had been two hundredths in front on the first run. Glatzel also delivered a great second run until he touched the boards. On the other track, Pignetter took first only six hundredths in the lead. Wow, that was tight, and Glatzel took sixth place in the end. No time to rest. The athletes had to get up to the start again for the semis. It's Kammerlander versus Scheichel. The third from last year's overall ranking was half a second in front in the first round, but now he was on the unpopular blue track. Scheichel pushed the envelope, though, riding aggressively and faultlessly. 13 hundredths in the lead, and that was victory and the qualification for the final. Kammerlander still had the opportunity to get bronze in the petite final. In the second semifinal, an eagerly awaited duel, Patrick Bignetta versus countryman Alex Gruber, who had beaten him in the previous season. But would he be able to repeat that feat? He was 19 hundredths in front after run number one, but Bignetta had the faster red track. Gruber had to risk it all and gave a flawless performance. At the last bank, though, it was Pignetter who found the faster line, and at the finish, he was two hundredths ahead of Gruber, who had to fight for bronze now. In a thrilling duel for third place, Gruber had to compete against Thomas Kammerlander. Kammerlander had been sixth in 2014 and wanted to improve on that. He was in front by 26 hundredths, but on the blue track now, Kammerlander attacked, trying hard to compensate for the slower track. Gruber didn't seem to be as dynamic as in the rounds before. The result, Kammerlander lost only six hundredths of a second, which meant bronze for him, while Gruber had to be happy with fourth place. And now, the final highlight, the showdown. Patrick Pignetter against Michael Scheichel. Just as in the rounds before, Pignetter was back after the first run. The Austrian took 25 hundredths from him, but would Pignetter be upset by this? He had the advantage of riding the red track, but Scheichel had the better start. The Austrian knew that the best loser in the world was hunting him, so he raced down the hill regardless of the consequences. Would this be his third victory in the World Cup? No. 
Vigneter stayed cool. Again in the final bank, he decided the race. Again, he won by two hundredths. Incredible. Patrick Pigneter was the winner of the day, and a happy Michael Scheichel took second place. It was a mental thing today. I was always behind in the first runs and caught up in the second. Six hundredths in the quarterfinal, two in the semis, two in the final. That's not as it normally should be. I've got big feet. Maybe that was the key. But that was a thrilling race today. With this photo finish, the Natural Track Losers World Cup kickoff found a worthy end. Let's wait and see what the remaining races of the season will have in store. And that's it for today. See you next time on World of Free Sports.